What's up, gang? I'm Folygon. I'm here with your daily dose of ZBrush and work motivation. In this video, I have a speed sculpt for you of a little gerblin guy. I saw a really awesome concept by Jonathan Fletcher, and I wanted to do a quick speed sculpt of this guy. There's a link to his art in the description. Definitely check out his work. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this, and I will attempt to explain as much of my thought process as I can as we go through this sculpt. So as per typical, you know, I start with that sphere and I attempt to shape this guy into uh, his basic proportions kind of as quickly as I can. I start off by kind of just pulling that head and chin uh, into their pointed shapes and throw a sphere on for his nose. Interesting little process that I kind of always do for inserting new meshes if I'm just using a primitive like a sphere or a cube or a cylinder. I just uh, duplicate my sub tool really fast, throw on that object, in this case a sphere for the nose as well as the eyes, and then I just uh, control shift click that new geometry and do a delete hidden function. It's a uh, great way to insert new geometry into your mesh uh, and get a new sub tool going pretty quick. Right now, I'm just trying to get the main portions of this character into place. So, you know, I have the head, I have the eyes, and I have the ears that I just threw in there now. And attempting to now get a neck and body in there. Just, you know, as a placeholder almost at this point. Uh, you know, he has a pretty sloppy posture for, for a goblin, you know, even by goblin standards. <laughs> So, you know, I just give him a quick curved body there and move forward to working with the nose, working with the brow, and that uh, nasolabial fold there across the, that's what that line is that's kind of between the eyes and the nose. Obviously all just roughed in very quickly with clay tubes, great brush for just roughing stuff in really quickly. I uh, attempted to kind of over-exaggerate uh, this this form in the chin between the lips just to get that curve and then I redynamesh it and kind of go back through and smooth that uh, smooth that down later but you know again just uh, using clay tubes to get as much of this down as I can you know adjusting that brow adjusting that oddly far back cheekbone you know messing more with this nose this nose is kind of his main feature so I wanted this to kind of have a really good form and shape and you know right now it's not exactly looking like the concept but uh, I am attempting to get that closer as I move around. So my objective when I'm doing a, uh, I, I guess not my objective but my process for when I'm sculpting, doing a speed sculpt or you know just sculpting in general in ZBrush is to uh, never focus on one part of the mesh for a incredibly long amount of time and and then like I'm I'm finishing the eyes and I completely forgot to work on the character's cheeks or uh, or the the chin or the nose or or something like that. Um, so my my process is you know jump around as much as you can, which is what you're going to see me doing here a lot. You know, I was just messing with the proportions of the head. Now I'm back on the nose. I am pulling that that shape, uh, that that curve of the nose, or I guess it would be called a hook, uh, the the hook of the nose there, and kind of giving it that hard edge down there. And then I jump back up to the brow real quick, trying to just use clay tubes, some some alt pinch. Uh, the pinch brush is awesome. I use it uh, just for getting a a form or a surface to turn in a way I need it to. Uh, and if you hold the Alt key while you're using Pinch, um, as with any brush in ZBrush, if you're holding the Alt key, it does the, the Alt effect of that brush, or the opposite effect, at least for most brushes. Um, for the Pinch brush, that uh, pulls the mesh into itself and kind of like pushes it into the mesh. So it doesn't like spread it out like you would think it would do for the opposite effect of a pinch. It just uh, it still does the same thing, but it pulls into the mesh, and it's super useful. Definitely try it out on some stuff. I use it all the time. So if you noticed with the eyes there, I just threw in some quick poly paint 
Um, when you're working on a character, I find it extremely helpful to throw in all the, the parts of a face, like the eyes and teeth and eyebrows and hair. Uh, any of those extra little parts that aren't really going to be a part of the main subtool of the character's head or body or anything like that. Throwing that stuff in really quick in the beginning helps you see proportions, it helps you kind of just more quickly base out your entire character to get those primary and secondary forms that you're going to be looking for. Having those uh, teeth and eyes and brows and lashes and all that other stuff is just going to help in general for you to kind of, you know, reference those shapes and objects with your main head or body. So right now I am just attempting to get a basic shape for this eyelid. I, uh, I, I come back to this, this kind of skin fold here quite often and I uh, attempt to just reshape it to get it closer to the concept. You know, in, I, I see this very frequently in 2D art where, you know, 2D is awesome because you can cheat a lot of stuff and you can cheat a little bit in 3D Especially if you're only showing one angle, you, I would argue that you could cheat just as much as 2D. But uh, with with ZBrush, with 3D modeling in general, you know, it can't just look good from one angle. It's got to look good from every angle, and that's what's that's what's so challenging about 3D, right? So you can you can have it look really good from this one angle, but as soon as you rotate your mesh around all of a sudden it looks absolutely terrible from this other view, this other perspective. So now I'm just trying to get some kind of secondary forms around the nose, around those na nasolabial folds that I was talking about before. And while I'm doing that, I'm just kind of inflating them. And I'm not just focusing on secondary forms. Like that, the, the transition isn't like, uh, here's a primary shape and a secondary shape, and now I'm only doing secondary shapes. It's a it's a huge back and forth battle. Uh, like once you once you block out all your uh, all your surfaces and everything that you're working with. I mean, even even for me, you know, I was just messing with the eyes again and the cheeks, uh, the cheekbones there, and I'll be coming back to those again later, just so I can kind of flush those out more and more as I go. Like I said before, you know, you never want to focus on any one part. I threw on some quick poly paint there just to get an idea of the colors that this guy is going to be seen in. Um, this isn't the exact paint that I, I work with through the entire figure, you'll see me kind of do a similar uh, structure to my sculpting, you know, like I said, I jump around a lot. I do the same thing with poly paint, so you know, I throw in some, I, or I, I block in some quick colors with this, this green and this orange, but then I end up switching my material out later, uh, trying a few different things, throwing some more poly paint on there. A great technique for just getting some good block block in poly paint is to just grab a brush. The standard brush works great, and then uh, switch your stroke to color spray, and uh, just just use that at 100% RGB or a value of 100 for your RGB for whatever color you're painting. You can block out with that. You can even uh, fill the color, uh, which is good for just starting out, just to get an idea of of what color you're working with and what it's going to look like on your mesh. Um, as far as painting as well, I like to use, I believe it's the Alpha 07 or 08. I'll be using it here in a bit to kind of get a, uh, and, and you use this with the color spray as well. It's a great way to just get some, some blocked out colors as well, and it's good for skin detail. Uh, it's, it's good for a lot of stuff. It's good for just general painting. I use it all the time. Go ahead and give it a try for yourself and you'll be able to see uh, my technique for that here in a little bit as well. Just throwing in uh, some quick meshes for the hair and what that's going to look like later. If you look at the process that I used this time, it was a little bit different than my uh, duplicate mesh and then throw in a primitive like I was talking about before. This time what I did was I just duplicated the head. I deinflated that mesh a tiny bit so that it uh, wouldn't be seen, and then I just pulled it through the mesh of the head, which is a great way for doing hair or at least just for uh, getting those 
primary primitive shapes in there and getting that blocked out, which is what I did there. And then from there, anything that's left inside of the mesh, you can do a Boolean DynaMesh subtraction. Um, and if, if you're not familiar with how you do that, it's very, very simple. If you have two subtools there, the subtool that is underneath will be the mesh that will subtract from your DynaMesh. Over on your subtool palette on the far right, you see that there's two circles. There's a, a white circle, and then to the right of that, there's like a half uh, gray circle as well. Or I'm sorry, to the left of that. Um, there are a few different options there for Boolean operations, but if you click the option that is to the right of those two circles on the mesh that is below your subtool list, you can merge those two objects down run a DynaMesh and it will subtract whatever that lower mesh is. And I do that all the time. You can probably see me use that function here in this sculpt more than a few times. And if, uh, if my explanation there is not clear, please let me know. I'll definitely uh, be making a tutorial or a, a video that's not sped up quite as much as this at some point in the future where I can show more of that process. Right now, I have the lower jaw split from the upper jaw. I find this extremely helpful on any kind of humanoid character or any kind of character that has a mouth uh, that is closed or even open. Um, really, it doesn't matter. I kind, of, I kind of do this process on most things. What's great about uh, splitting the jaw from the rest of the head is that you can have the intersection of the lower lip and the upper lip uh, merge together and you can work with your mesh and DynaMesh them separately or Z-Remesh them separately without worry of them being combined. So it kind of gives you a little bit more control. I am definitely within the uh, camp of the more subtools, the better. So the more subtools that you're working with, the more uh, kind of control that you're going to have over your mesh's interaction uh, together. So with that split, I am able to kind of create that little bit of a mouth bag. Really, no mouth bag is going to be needed on this character, simply because it's just going to be rendered out and used as an illustration. Right now I'm using the Move Brush with the AccuCurve turned on, feature that I love just to get those sharp points, very good for, for getting those shapes out, as well as uh, the Move Brush with Back Face Masking on. I use that quite frequently as well. Additionally, I am adjusting the shape of the head. Like I said previously, um, you know, it's a battle between these primary and secondary forms, kind of these stages are, are intertwined together almost where you know, you're gonna be jumping back and forth where you, where you, uh, you realize, hey, I'm, I'm working on this secondary shape here and it's just not working. Well, it's probably because the, the entire object just is not working. So I need to kind of take a step down in subdivisions or in geometry, you know, maybe do a, a read DynaMesh at a low, at a low value, just to get an idea of that basic shape to see what that looks like. Again, just blocking in some more paint, some more shapes for this hair that's on the back of his head. I go ahead and just break symmetry on this hair pretty quick and start throwing in some curved tubes with a size modifier. I throw some uh, longer tubes on the, the, the main portion of his hair back there, attempting to dynamesh those in and get an interesting kind of flow and shape there very quickly, which is a process that I use quite often, but I just realize that it's, it's a very uh, lengthy process to go through. So I opt to just uh, do some spiked effects with, uh, with the move brush and that Accu curve again. I'll be going more into the hair and the rest of the figure in the next video, flushing out everything, as well as going through my render process, pulling out all my, um, my render passes, and then throwing those in Photoshop and comping all of that together. I'll go through all that just so you can kind of see my process for the entire thing. All right, that's gonna be it for this one, gang. If you have any ideas for future videos you would like to see, please post them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys, 
And if you want to follow me for updates, I'm on a few of the socials. Or you can go ahead and click that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new videos. And finally, I just want to say thank you so much for checking out my content. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something new, and I will see you next time.